Hello and welcome to the 104th edition of Gran Piemonte, first run in 1906, but this year held in unique circumstances and over a very different race route from last time across the stunning landscapes of Barolo. And here's the race uh, map. From the stake start at Santo Stefano Belbo, the riders weave around the Piedmont region towards a rendezvous point after the Arnold d'Alba, where a 44-kilometer circuit begins. The peloton passes through Barolo twice, the second time peeling off for a steep ramp that leads to the finish line. Nibali, Nibali. Genzo Nibali. Okay, Ciccone. so Nibali goes with Ciccone on Mosco, his wheel. Bennett. Bennett's going to go over the top. It looks like he's going to go, isn't it? Moscon. Looks Frolo. like it is going. And, uh, Ciccone. Moscon uh, trying to go with him, but not Dev. quite managing. A little gap opening. Bennett is going to blow him from the wheel. Surround. Bennett looking relatively comfortable and uh, Moscon looking in difficulty. I mean, he's keeping it going, but those two have ridden yeah. away. Yes, yes. It looks like Rob Stannard in, in, in between uh, maybe George Bennett. Moscon on the limit. It's 500 meters to the top. And uh, Mathieu van der Poel makes his move. Now, where's he, Steve? I can't see where it... Now he's coming up he's to Moscon. To Moscon. Yeah, yeah. So he's going to yeah, uh, yeah. ride past Moscon, but it looks a big ass to uh, top catch. Top of the climb. Uh, top of the climb there. Yeah. So if Van der Poel and Moscon get together, it's fantastic. It's great to see George Bennett being let off the <laughs> off the race. He's so talented. He's often riding in the surface of all others. Oh, he's There's a go. clearer view. Yeah. But that's clean air. He knows what he's got to do. He's just got to go full now to the finish and not look over his shoulder. Just commit. It looks like he's going to do it. Van der Poel, Moscon. The problem is if you get a few dead legs in this group, yep. they or start to look at uh, each other. Going start through to... and uh, doing a uh, doing a kind of false pull at the front. Yeah. Yep. 21 seconds now for Bennett, 2K to go. Surely CC to C have to commit one guy now. George Bennett repeated looks over his uh, left shoulder there to see uh, where the uh, chasers are. Here Geshka, is uh, Simon Geshka with Olisi on his wheel. Come on, George. But they're not catching on him. Last few hundred meters. Then he'll go right and he'll sort of flatten out. And uh, there go he on, is. George. Spins round uh, to the left. Uh, the uh, sprint on, seems George. to go behind him. Well, just for a second, he it's seems to lose impetus. Three, four hundred meters to go. Three, four hundred meters to go. And, uh, and they're coming fast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lisi. Oh, oh, Lisi God, really George. is sprinting yeah, hard. 150, 150 meters. Meters. This is it uh, enough? And we're on to the uh, finish line cameras now, which give uh, uh, sometimes an uh, awkward uh, position. Oh, is going to be very close, but George Bennett <laughs> has won it well. Uh, the right hand goes up. Oh, Lisi, I mean, it would probably be the same time with him. Uh, I think Matteo van der Poel got uh, third place. Yeah. And Diego Lisi, well, shakes his head. Inches uh, away, really, but uh, by then uh, Bennett had he, done it. Well, they are worth pointing to Alexander Velasov. We spoke about him in commentary. Uh, fourth uh, place uh, today uh, in a, a very high quality uh, field. Uh, Geshka, fifth, Alex Aramburu, uh, second uh, in Devin. the uh, Tritico Lombardo. How emotional is this? Uh, it's good, you know, I know I've. Uh... I only had two days in the season now left where I can ride for myself, you know, I had today and Saturday and the rest. I go back to being a domestique for, uh, I mean, on our team we have the best riders in the world and so when I have an opportunity now on this team I really have to take it and uh, yeah, I'm really happy that, that uh, I could do it today. I told the boys I wanted to try and uh, they really did a, a wonderful job and yeah, really happy and I'm really, uh, I mean, they told us on the radio halfway that Walt won in, uh, in Dauphiné. Rogler's winning everywhere, everybody's winning, and uh, I just wanted to get in on the action. How did you pick the right moment to attack with 7.5k to go? Uh, I just wanted to wait until the hardest part of the race. I was really worried it wasn't hard enough. Um, so I asked the boys to make it as hard as they could, and uh, they did a good job, you know. All the boys, they positioned me all day. Paul and Kuhn were chasing, and, and then Chris made it super hard in the last bit on the climb, and uh, Vincenzo tried to attack, and I could see he wasn't really he was fading a little bit, and as soon as I felt that, I went. And uh, yeah, I was a bit scared on the downhill when it had the half rain, half half dry. 
and um, yeah, that's always really scary. You don't know how hard you can push, so I, I tried to take it as easy as I could, but still go fast.